There are so many locations in old school RuneScape, especially ones that are strictly quest related only. Many of these areas you never go back to because they are just completely dead, useless, or unique areas that don't have a reason to attract players to anymore. The map of RuneScape is vast and expanding periodically, like we just got a recent expansion in Voldemort. Today, I'm going to walk us through 10 of the most unique useless areas in the game that you've probably never been to and have forgotten about. Starting off with number one is the Mudskipper's Point which is a small peninsula located in the southern part of the Kingdom of Asgarnia. Fun fact, this is the only fairy ring in this whole entire region and that's fairy ring AIQ, you can use that to get here. There are only two reasons why you would come to this area, and one reason is there is an easy clue step that can be completed here with a stash unit. The other reason is over here, you can lure the ominous, ominous fishing spot, so you need to use a fishing explosive in the water, and that will summon a morgue, you can kill him, and he has two drops, two unique drops I should say, that one being the mudskipper's hat and the flippers. Collection log completionists will come to this area as it is two log slots. So that being the Mudskipper's hat, I have three of them. And the flippers, I have one of them. This is what it looks like when they're equipped. And the only other reason why you would come here is because in the Faldor medium diary task, this is a task to kill a morgue at the Mudskipper's point. Other than those three reasons, there's truly no reason to come to Mudskipper's point. It is labeled on the map and it's just useless after that. We all know Bregdarot as a swamp town located in the southern part of Mortania, right down here. The most notable quests in this area are Darkness of Hallowvale, A Taste of Hope, and An Aid of Mydeke. The Temple Trekking minigame can also be accessed here once those quests are completed and you do gain access to this town. There's a pub, a bank, furnace and a small general store but did you know what's going on just to the east of Bergdorot? well i'll tell you what it is and it's a bunch of nothing it's just this vast area of full of dead trees and vampires and one bronze pickaxe location just to the north of this large area is a small crumbling building here you can find one hard clue step and the only reason why you would come here I guess if you have a slayer task, you would be killing the vampire juvenilence. Other than that, these guys could be relocated to any other area. And this area could just disappear and it would affect nobody ever. Our third location is Tarn's Lair, located in the south southwestern part of Mortania. You can access that through the abandoned mine entrance or if you have a slayer ring you can actually just teleport there using teleport option 4 teleport to Tarn's lair this is a complex dungeon and it features three different layers a lower middle and upper layer the main attraction of this place is the mini quest to kill Tarn obviously located in Tarn's lair completion of this mini quest does unlock the ability to enchant the salve amulet to salve amulet E, but there's really no reason to run through this entire maze because the ring just teleports you here now. Once here, you can just run into this passageway past the terrier dogs, which will constantly attack you, and it's multi combat. And then here is the diary that you need to complete the mini quest. Fun fact, there's also a bank in Tarn's Lair, which I bet you did not use or did not know about. You have to do have to pay him 100 coins in order to access your bank, so if you don't have 100 coins on you, good luck, you can't use it, get the hell out of here. Up next, if your guy can equip the D-Skimitar, then this place looks pretty familiar to you. We're headed to Crash Island, baby. Crash Island is a small island just to the east of Apatol. You gain access to this island during Monkey Madness 2, so that's why it does look a little bit familiar to you boys. There's also a dungeon right here, the exclamation spot. This is used in the sub-quest of freeing King Agawugi during Recipe for Disaster. And there's actually one coordinate spot just to the east of this island, 
which is used for clue scrolls. Other than those reasons, you ain't never coming back to Crash Island, boys. Let's head in the pit. It's a snake pit, you get instantly poisoned and attacked by snakes. I'm sure you remember that. For number five is the city of Miterdeach. I don't really know how to pronounce that, so go ahead and insult me in the comments all you want. This is a slum ruled land by Lord Drinken and his family from the city of vampires in Darkmire, the capital of Mauritania. Slum, slum maze. I hated this freaking quest. I hated going through this city multiple times. Imagine having to go through that just to go to the raid, how awful that would be. Thank God for the amulet that teleports you right into the outside of the raid. But anyways, this is a maze filled city with invincible fire watches here. You can only kill them with the flail right there. You can't kill them otherwise. Basically after this quest is completed, there's no reason on earth why you would run back through this city again. Thank God. So thus making it useless and a unique area that you will never come back to again. It's very large, as you can see here. It goes all the way up to Darkmire. Heading up to number six on our list is a small island. As you see, I'm standing on it right now. Only accessed by faring CLP. It's an island just right outside of Draenor. The island has an unofficial name. It's not tagged on the map. It's just called Draenor Island. Hence being right outside of Draenor Village. The only reason why you would come to this small island is for one hard clue coordinate step where a player will have to fight a Ceridorman wizard. There are two tree spawns on this island, just normal trees and a large rock. Other than that, it's basically just a useless island that Jagex put a clue scroll step on. Welcome to number 7 on the list boys and welcome to the Faldor party room. I am on the official world for it. 305 as you see there's absolutely nobody here just me and party pete i'm going to show you something cool and interesting about this place head over to the staircase head down the stairs and you actually find a museum kind of looks a little bit like the varrock museum right so if you head down these stairs here players can actually explore the history of old school runescape the years that everything came out. You can go and examine this, the display cases, I believe. So it's a display case, and then you can examine everything. It tells you the date and the year that the item or the monster was released, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of detail and effort that went into building this whole area. We're gonna head downstairs. And there's some more cool stuff when they added tombs of a mascot okay so that's the most recent one so it looks like downstairs is more recent updates wilderness boss display 2023 yep so the upstairs is the older updates downstairs is the newer updates doesn't make sense should be the other way around but that's okay so yeah this is a cool unique area i'm sure you guys have never been down here nobody comes to the faldor party room anyways um and if you do you never going up or down the stairs there but it's pretty cool. I mean, the team put a lot of effort into making this, obviously. Looks pretty nice, pretty sharp down here. And... Now for number eight on our list, this area looks kind of pretty. You see some red chins. It's basically all this area is used for. This is the area north of Priftinus. This large, expansive area, which is filled with nothing useful that you would come here for. There's a maple tree spawn, a couple shark and lobster spawns that I never see people fishing at. Range, water, mining for gold, which God knows why you would do that. You wouldn't. Really the only two reasons, I guess three reasons why this area is used is because there's a shooting star spawn. Thanks to Jagex for putting a shooting star spawn right up there. Pain in the ass to get to, kind of annoying, whatever. Has to run all around the cliff there. That. The red chins, and I bet you did not know this. There's a cave right here. It's not even on the map. So once you enter this cave, it's a level, what is it? Level two? Level one rabbit? It's a level two rabbit. This guy has 2000 HP, highly accurate. See right there, he hit a 29 on me. Uh, 2000 HP. 
So you would come here, and the only drop this guy drops is a chalice right here. I have actually killed him before. It's the Crystal Grail, actually. Sorry. So this item's going for about 350k in the GE right now. It does take quite a while to kill him. Um, it's a cool collection log slot. But other than that, this large area just north of Prithinus, nobody comes here. I've never seen people here. I mean... It's huge, it looks nice, they put a lot of effort and work into it, it's unique, it's useless. You can put that rabbit anywhere. For number 9 on our list, we have the Fishing Realm. This is a small kingdom not seen on the map in the game, which is kind of annoying, so if I click the mini-map here, it doesn't show up. Um, there's only two ways to get here, one way being the Fairy Ring, code BJR. And the other way is the magic whistle, which can be found during the quest. This bridge here, this is probably the most time you spent in the fishing realm during the quest, the Holy Grail. Um, you are required to kill the Black Knight Titan to, in order to cross the bridge to get up into the castle. So there's the magic whistle spawn if you ever lose it. Take magic whistle. Blow it. Oh, wait. There we go. Okay, yep. So if you blow it once while in the fishing realm, it teleports you out of there. And then if you're not in the fishing realm, it teleports you just to the eastern side of it. Yeah, like I said, it's a pretty large area here. As you can see, I just quick, quick glance around. Um, oh, there's actually a guy running up there right now. He's probably doing a clue scroll. That's funny. So you got some wheat, sheep, potatoes, cabbage, castle, and a little shed here. And that's basically it. Um, you know, unique, cool, useless. Also, at the same time, after the quest is done, Jagex just makes you come back here for a clue step. Our last useless area on this list is the Shadow Dungeon. This dungeon is accessed for the first time during Desert Treasure 1, where players must fight Damus can only be seen and accessed if you have the ring of shadow zone which i just equipped it right now or the ring of visibility you head right down to this dungeon the only reason why you would come back down here is there's an elite clue step right here and at the end of the dungeon i can't show you the maze again it doesn't show it up on the map but at the end of the dungeon where you do fight demas i think that's his name um there's another clue step all the way at the end there so it's just a large maze dark dungeon um, pretty useless, like I said, after the quest is done, you're not going to come back down here, of course, unless you're doing loose rolls. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think if you've been to these, any of these areas in the game before, during, or after a quest. Um, if you enjoyed the video, what you think, and if I should do another one.